Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about differences between Italy and the US. To give you a little bit of background, we've been living in Italy for over two years now, but we actually left the US back in 2021. We spent about seven months in Mexico, and then from there we made the jump to Europe, to Italy. And we've been here since the end of March of 2022. This is just to make basically a list of things that are different. It doesn't mean they're better or worse, they're just different. If you are Italian moving to the US or somebody from the US coming to Italy, you have to adjust to certain differences. Okay, let's begin. The first one and very common that many people already know is the day format. In the US, the day format is month, day, year. So you will say March 1st, 2024. But in Italy and most of the world, it is day, month, year. So for example, 1st March, 2024. Now, why is this important? Well, because you know, if you have to make appointments or um, if you have to check on expiration date. Okay, here's an example of why the date is important. Here's Mayo, okay? And the expiration is the 4th, of January 2025. Now, if you are from the US, you will be reading this as April 1st, but it will be already expired uh, by almost four months. So you have to be aware of uh, the importance of the, the date format. Number two, time format. In the US, people use the 12 hour format which means that at 12 noon, everything starts to be PM, right? AM, PM. Well, in Italy, and honestly, most of the world, it is used the 24 hour format. This format is the one that in the US, uh, people refer to as the military time. So as you can see, 13.30, that's 1.30, 1400, 14.30. This uh, is, you know, using the 24 hour clock, like I explained, is common and you get used to it. Number three, and this is a huge one, the metric system. When I moved from Argentina to the US, it took me a minute to get used to the imperial system that is used in the States. So, you know, stepping on a scale, for example, you're going from being 50 kilos to 110 pounds. It is a shock. On the contrary, somebody that is coming from the imperial system to the metric system, it's actually a relief. But you have to think that everything is impacted when it comes to the differences in measuring things. You're talking about miles versus kilometers. That is probably the biggest adjustment that you have to do um, either Italian going to the US or US coming to Italy. Going from one system to the other is really an adjustment, um, especially if you're going to be driving it benefits you to actually learn the metric system really quick, especially if you're coming from the US. Number four, 110 versus 220, and we're talking about electricity. This is an important one, especially if you are bringing, I don't know, a hair dryer, for example. You have something that is 110 in the US, and then you come here and it's 220, it's gonna you know, blow it up. So you need to be aware of the difference in the electricity, um, in the you know, power. The power outlets are also different than in the US. So let me show you. Here is the socket. So you can see um, that it's different than the ones in the US. We're at number five. Number five is drinking age. In the US, drinking age is 21. In Italy, the penal code actually says that they cannot sell alcohol to any person under 16. But there is a different approach to alcohol in Italy compared to the US. And this is not a criticism, but in the US it seems like the teenagers are obsessed with it. I, I don't want to say obsessed, they're more, um, well I guess obsessed is the word. I guess it's that prohibited behavior allure for them and you do see that um, it is a it's kind of a big deal in the US. But in Italy, it's just normal. People have a glass of wine with a meal, middle of the day, during the week. I mean, it's just normal. It's not taken as something taboo. One more thing, if you look over 18, they're not going to ask you for ID here. The, in the US, 
you go, you're going to the grocery store to buy a bottle of wine, they are going to ask you for your ID. Um, they have to scan it in the register. Here, nothing. They don't, they don't ask you for ID at all. We never been caught it. I know I'm old, but still, you know, they don't, they don't ask you for ID. Number six. And by now, everybody heard this over and over and over again. The work to leave versus leave to work mentality. If we're going to be honest, in the US, not taking vacations, working until you die, is like a badge of honor. It's a, it's a different approach altogether. In the US, if you are taking days off, um, you're always afraid that you're not gonna climb the ladder, whatever your job might be. Especially if you are in a administration role or you know manager, things like that. People just don't take off. And when you do, it is very difficult to take two weeks vacation, you know, all together. Here in, in Italy and in Europe in general, it is normal to take time off and it's actually respected. People, you know, they, they, they go to work and they know that once the day is over, it's over, they go home. They understand that their job is going to be there tomorrow. There is also a boundary. When you're on vacation, you're on vacation. In, in the US, that's, that's a little different. And you guys tell me, I mean, you know, there are different, different jobs, different areas, and you know, different career have different set of boundaries. Okay, so let's move on to number seven, which is time to number six, obsession with money. I guess this is more about um, acquiring things. It's not just a money, it's um, the material stuff. In the US, it seems like it's always chasing that standard, keeping up with the Joneses, like they say in English. They, um, okay, I have a, a better job, now I need a bigger house, now I need a better car, things like that. It's not much of you know, the saving mentality, and I hate to say that, but it, it, that's how the perception. Here it seems like people appreciate more the, the, the things they have, um, they don't look to acquire that many things, you know, I don't know, it just, it's just, it, it, there's a different feeling. There is also, of course, the money aspect, the, in the US people earn more than in Italy, in Italy they earn less. In the US also the footprint is bigger so you know you do have your your big house you can store more things here the footprint is smaller um, there is no storage culture here like in the US so it's again it's different now people accumulate yes over the years yes they do but it's kind of on a normal pace comparing to the US number eight bigger versus smaller in the US, what we consider normal size appliances or houses, um, here in Italy, are that those are considered large or even extra large. So, for example, I can show you our dishwasher or our oven or our refrigerator. They are all smaller than what you're used to in the US. When it comes to cars, same thing. You have to understand that the roads, many of the roads here in Italy, are very narrow. And there are places that we've driven to that you are up on a hill and there is, a, I mean, it's a two-way road and you get to a point where there's oncoming traffic and you have to stop and you have to back up to let them through because there's, no in, there's not enough room for both cars to be on the road. So you will see tiny cars, smart car size, everywhere here. It's very, very normal. Um, you know, I, I think they're super cute, but yeah, you, it's very, very normal to find the tiny, tiny cars here. Number nine, AC. This has been a contentious um, topic in the internet for a while. Uh, Europe doesn't have AC, the US, it's freezing you to death. Okay, in the US, they do freeze you. I used to carry a light cardigan with me everywhere because if I would, I don't know, go to a movie, I needed something to put on. If I would go to the mall sometimes, 
I had to put something on because it's freezing. And the, and the heat during the summer, you really don't feel it in the US because you're going from the AC in your house to the AC to your, in your car to the AC uh, in a, any store. So you're really not feeling it. In Europe, you do feel it. They do have AC, but they don't put them at the freezing point like they do in the US. In Italy, it seems like um, a, an AC is not a priority. The summers are hot. I'm not going to lie, the summers are hot. And it's, it, it could be unbearable in certain areas. So uh, that, in that aspect, it is an adjustment. Now, something that they do here um, is, of course, they use a lot of fans, but they do have the small units uh, AC, the ones that, that you have to, um, they put a hole on the, on the window, uh, you know, it's like a vent, but they are smaller units. Many of them are just for a room. And they also have the units that go on the wall, but again, they are smaller. It's not something, you know, in the US, you have those huge units in the house that, you know, it, um, AC throughout the entire house. That's not, that's not the same. Number 10. At what age children leave their house? In the US, it's very normal for kids to leave the house when they are 18. It is customary. I mean, an 18 year old doesn't have an issue leaving home. A parent doesn't have an issue that that child is leaving the house. It's a cultural thing. In Italy, it is very normal to see a 40 year old living at home. It's normal. It's not something that people, you know, are shocked. But I found this map of the ages in Europe that people are leaving their houses and you know I thought it was appropriate to show it here. It is normal for um, multiple generations to live in one house and also you know sometimes it's normal to just wait until they get married to leave the house. Normal. Again it's a cultural difference and it's not just Italy. That's many countries around the world that that's the way it is. Okay, number 11, food diversity. When I left Argentina and I moved to the US, uh, I was going with my Argentinian palate, let's say. I ate Argentinian food my whole life and it was not, um, it was just Argentinian food, okay? Meat, um, empanadas, people who knows about Argentinian food, you know what I'm talking about. Now, I arrived to the US and something that the US did for me was to open up my palate, to try different things, which I am thankful for because let me tell you something, trying, the, trying buffalo wings for the first time was a shocker for my, my, uh, my mouth. And I lived in Miami for, you know, in South Florida for many, many years and I got to try Cuban food. Salvadorian food, um, I don't know, just different, different stuff. And of course, American food. Uh, then I moved to Texas. And in Texas, I got to try Mexican food. You know, it was the first time for me, even though I'm Hispanic and I'm from a Hispanic country, Latin country, uh, trying Mexican food because that was something back in 95, before 95, that we didn't have in, in Argentina. In Italy, the food variety is more regional. So you're going to have, you know, food from the north, food from the south, food from Tuscany, you know, every region has their own food. Of course, the food is great. You know, there is no question about it. Now, and that's the, and I wanna say, that's the biggest difference between living and uh, visiting, right? When you're visiting the place, you want to try the food from that place. That's, that's part of the, the whole adventure of traveling. But when you're living in a place, you do want some variety. And that is something that is, is a little bit of an adjustment for somebody that comes from the US. You will eat different Italian food, but if you want something outside Italian, you will have to look for it. Um, we are living in an area in Tuscany where the variety, for example, you will have some sushi and you will have some um, kebab, for example, but that's it. If you want uh, Mexican food, you will have to go to Pisa. You will have to go to other bigger cities. 
Um, same with Argentinian food, same with Brazilian food, any, any, any other type of variety of food, you will have to go to other places. So that's what I'm talking about when, when it comes to food variety. Again, the food is great here, not saying anything bad about it, it's just that uh, if you want something else besides Italian, you will have to look for it. To, in, in bigger cities are easier to find than where we are. If you're in a smaller town, it's gonna be harder to find um, you know, a, a variety outside of Italian. Number 12, meals are a long affair here. So when, uh, when you go to eat in the States, it's in and out, in and out. You go in, you sit down, you have your meal, and they're coming to check on you every five minutes. And it's basically, it feels like they're rushing you, which they are, because the, it is a different system, right? In the US, the servers are working for tips. Here, they don't. So when you go to eat at a restaurant here, you can take easily two hours. Nobody's going to bother you. It is, it is normal. When you make a reservation, they are expecting that you are going to stay there at least two hours. So again, very normal. People enjoy the meal. They take their time to have a conversation, have a you know, glass of wine, things like that. Very, 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 very normal. Go, going out to eat here is a lot more relaxed in that sense. Also, dinner in the US could start at 5 p.m. In Italy, it's later than that. Um, restaurants might not open until 6.30, 7, some at, at 7.30. So dinner is gonna be later than um, in the US. Number 13, restaurants and refills. In Italy, you have a restaurant charge called coperto, which basically covers bread and the setting at the table. In the US, you don't have that. But on the flip side, in the US, you have to tip, which you don't do here. Refills, that's not a thing here. Ref uh, free refills, like they do in the States, it's not a thing here. When you order a, um, a Coke, for example, you will get a bottle of Coke. You're not going to get the, the fountain, you know, soda like you do in the States. Even McDonald's does not have free refills. They don't have the machines out in the open, you know, for people to just go and take the refill. That's not, that's not a thing here. So that's an adjustment. Number 14, people don't go out in PJs like they do in the States. Uh, it is common in the States to just put whatever you want comfortable and just go out if you need to go grocery shopping, whatever. I mean, you can see people going out in PJs in a, a Walmart, for example, or even in jogging pants and things like a worker clothes to go to the grocery store to go to the mall things like that here no people people at least put a pair of jeans and a t-shirt oh so now there is this stereotype that all the italians dress like they're on a milano fashion show that's not the case of course if you're in milan or in rome and you see people that are dressed up it's probably because they're going to work i mean they they do dress normal they're not um, fashion models, but they're definitely not dressing up like Joe Dirt and going to the grocery store. I guess that's a bad comparison, but you know what I mean. Number 15, bureaucracy is a real thing here. We know that bureaucracy is everywhere. I mean, even in the States you have bureaucracy, but here is at a different level. Wait times are going to be longer. Just to give you an example, um, when you move here, which a lot of people don't know this, you have to register with your comune, which is the municipality basically, or in some places we call it the city in, um, in the States. And until you don't register and you don't go through that whole process and you get your lease or your contract, whatever contract it is, registered with the municipality, you cannot connect any of your utilities, for example. So it took us 30 days to connect power, water, and you know, gas and all that. Connecting Wi-Fi, you need a bank account. You need an actual Italian bank account, things like that. Uh, that makes things a little bit more complicated. And in my personal opinion, I don't think it should be that complicated, but they're used to it here and they deal with it. 
and you and in turn you you end up learning to deal with it too. Something that we had to deal with here was my husband's permit to to stay. Basically, uh, per, it's called permesso de soggiorno, which is a, a residency permit. We had to go to the police department for that. When I tell you, there are people outside in clusters. Nobody's forming a line, and you would. I mean, like for example, right? And this is from my um, administrator background. If you want things to go smoothly, you will set it up in a way that people, your customers, your clients, whatever it is, um, form a line so they can, you know, go in, so they can operate smoothly. Well, that's not a thing here. Forming a line is not really a thing, at least in this area. And as, again, it's more like clusters and people are trying to get in and things like that. So in that aspect, bureaucracy plus that not being organized, it makes it even harder. Um, I also experienced that when I went to get my passport, it was, it was kind of a situation like that. So again, perspective from somebody that is coming from outside. Number 16, driving. So they drive fast here and a little bit more aggressive. Now, aggressive not in the sense of I'm going to, you know, hit you or um, aggressive in trying to cause a crash. Aggressive in the sense that if you don't move fast, they will get on your tail. So you need to drive and keep up with it. I went through the driving license process here and let me tell you, it is completely different than in the States. And I explained that in a previous video that you can see that it is, it is a, to me it was a longer period, uh, more expensive and, and very, very different what you have to learn to get a driver license here than what you have to learn in the States. Number 17, language. People here are friendly if you try to speak Italian. Uh, Italians are very, very open when it comes to uh, trying to help you. So, for example, a, a buongiorno will, you know, good morning will take you a long way with Italians. Now, English is not widely spoken like in maybe other countries, like in the Netherlands, for example, everybody speaks English there, or at least almost everybody. Here, no. Now, you will find, find more English speakers in bigger towns and in certain uh, tourist spots, of course, because they're dealing with tourists all the time, so um, English is, is uh, more spoken in those areas. Now, when you move here, if you decide to move here, there are courses that are uh, put on by the comune, the municipality. They, uh, they cost 20 euros for the entire year, and uh, they're called CIPIA, which is the, the, the provincial center for um, the instruction of adults, basically. Right now we are attending classes there uh, and I am attending, you know, three days a week. My husband is attending two days a week and they test you at the beginning to see what your level is and things like that. And you will be there with other immigrants. So, you know, you get to connect with other cultures too. So learning Italian, it is important, especially if you're living here, because you have to go to doctor's appointments. You have to deal with, again, with government offices. And even though you can maybe hire somebody to uh, go with you as an interpreter, you still want to know what is happening. So learning Italian is it's a big, big, big thing here. Number 18, customer service. Customer service is different. You, if you're coming from the US, you have to lower your expectations. And I'm going to say this, um, this is kind of connected to my points about um, the, 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 the money and uh, how things are in the US when it comes to work and things like that. Why I'm saying that? Because in the US, it's all about making the sale. You go to, a, you enter a store, automatically somebody comes in, uh, how may I help you? Or, you know, did you find everything okay? If you ask, if you're looking for a, a shirt and you don't see it in your size and you ask a vendor, they will check on their, you know, inventory to see if they have it. Here, it's not like that. You go into a place and, you know, you, unless you go and look for somebody to help you, 
they're not really going to come in and, you know, and, and, and be on, on top of you, which is, it could be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. If you're one of the people who like to just walk around and, and browse and, and, you know, just see things and then when you're ready, you look for somebody, then it's okay, it's perfect. If you're a person who likes the attention, likes that somebody comes in really quick and, and trying to help you, then it's gonna bother you. Again, when it comes to customer service, it's just different. They're not chasing that sale like they do in the States. So you have to be a little bit more patient. Number 19, okay. This one is, I guess I don't have to say anything about it because it's actually very obvious, the gun culture. Here, that's not a thing. There are shooting ranges and things like that. As a matter of fact, there's one close by to us, but the, it, it's more of a sport thing. And I'm not saying there are not, you know, homicides. I'm, I'm not saying there are not, there's no crime, okay? There is. But the level is, you know, completely different. I mean, we're talking about apples and oranges. And I do want to say that we walk around at night, late at night, and you're not, you're not scared of getting, of getting shot. It does. You know, it does play in the back of your mind when you do, when you are in the States, you know, and I remember going to a movie and looking for exits and things like that. Again, this is perspective. If you don't feel that way, that's okay. You know, I mean, we all feel different, right? Okay, number 20, healthcare. Here we have universal healthcare. So it is covered by taxes and, and it's been pretty good. Uh, my husband already used it, I used it. It is also a lot cheaper than in the States. For just to give you an example, I, ha I have to carry an EpiPen with me and I went to my doctor here and she, gave, she wrote me a prescription. I went to the pharmacy of the hospital, turned in the, the prescription and they gave me the EpiPen. That's it. There was no exchange of money, nothing. And going to your primary care doctor, there's never an exchange of money. Unless you are requesting something, I don't know, maybe for example, I had to do the certificate for, uh, the health certificate for my driver license and that cost because it's, it's something that is not required, okay? But just to give you an example, my husband is a diabetic and he gets his diabetic medicine uh, without cost. Now, in the States, we all know We've been through it. I had emergency surgery there and it cost an arm and a leg. And that's that's a fact. I mean, we can we can agree or whatever or disagree, but that's that's really a fact. I mean, it is it is expensive. It is expensive to deliver a child, it is expensive to end up in an emergency room. Some people don't even want to ride in an ambulance, even if uh, after an accident, because they're scared of how much it's going to be. Here, no, I mean you need to call an ambulance, you call an ambulance, your um, emergency room visit is going to be taken care of, which is a big relief. Okay, so those are the 20 major differences that we kind of put together. Now, there are more, of course, and if you can think of more, if you are living here, if you're thinking about moving here and you have questions, let me know in the comments. I would love to, you know, answer your, your questions. Uh, maybe even make another video answering those questions if you know if there are a lot of doubts Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to check out our other videos